Uh, good afternoon and welcome to this SIMSI certification webinar. Uh, I'm Andrew Geens, Head of Certification, and uh, this afternoon we're proposing to run this as a SIMSI certification surgery. So uh, the idea is, first of all, I'll just tell you how we're operating in the current circumstances and uh, a bit about what we've been doing and what uh, we hope you might be doing. And then fairly quickly, we'll open it up to a, a question and answer session. Um, when you do uh, ask questions, which you can type in any time as we're going along, uh, I'll be able to see your questions and um, spread them around the team who are also joining us this afternoon. When you're uh, posing questions, please bear in mind this is an open forum. So try not to ask um, very specific to you type questions, just general questions, not questions about a particular case. Uh, particular case questions, you can send it in the usual way by email. So uh, the team are all in attendance. This is a bit of an unusual situation for us. We're normally all in the same room, but uh, we're now all in separate rooms and relying on this technology. So, Matija, uh, Pavlos, Steve, Helena, and Kirsten are all listening in at the moment. Uh, everyone is equipped to work from home, so this is a quick uh, run through of what's, uh, what's, what and how it's all working. So, uh, the whole team are set up to work from home. Uh, that includes being able to take phone calls on the usual landline numbers. Uh, of all the technology we're using, that's probably the most uh, flaky, if that's the right expression. It's working fine most of the time, but occasionally we do lose a call and have to phone back. Uh, you can email us at the usual email addresses. Uh, the online application portal is working as normal. The logic portal working as normal as is the QA portal and the website is also working as normal uh, with links through to the simply.org website where needed. So um, in the first few weeks of, uh, of this lockdown situation I find myself busier than usual if anything. Um, so uh, dealing with our oversight bodies, a lot of you um, have registration which uh, benefits from third party oversight, either UCAS or MHCLG or, or others. Um, so I've been working with those external uh, oversight bodies to establish how they want us to um, operate, you know, what we can and can't do with the technology. So that's been taking quite a lot of time. Um, I've also been speaking to all of the other schemes. For those of you that are involved with uh, energy performance of buildings and regulations work, um, there are five other schemes that are all in the same position. And uh, as a lot of you know, we work through a, a trade association, PEPA. We find that's the best way of getting the government to listen when we speak with one voice. So we've been collaborating on uh, the best way forward at the moment and uh, offering advice. So I will be referring you to PEPA today as well. So there are two websites. I have mentioned some of this in, in recent newsletters. Uh, to keep on top of uh, what's going on and to get the latest news and advice, uh, please use these two websites. There's our usual website. Uh, we're using the news page to get uh, fresh items out, uh, but also keep an eye on the PEPA, pepperassociation.org website as well. Um, for those links, the, uh, the presentation will go up on our website on the news page as well later on, so uh, anything you need from these slides you'll get there. Um, one of these calls just happened this morning. We were speaking to uh, our contact at the 
building standards division for the Scottish Government. So this really is hot off the press. It's not on the website yet. So the 71 of you attending this webinar at the moment are getting this uh, ahead of the rest. So there's your immediate benefit of being here today. Uh, the EPB regulations are different in Scotland when compared to the rest of the UK. Uh, Scottish Government guidance is clear, stay at home, you must stay at home. Uh, don't travel unless for food, for health reasons and for essential work. Now, uh, in the rest of the UK, there is guidance uh, on how you go about doing EPC work, uh, which is if it's considered essential for a property transaction to go ahead. Uh, but in Scotland, the legislation allows for exceptional circumstances. It's uh, Regulation 16, Paragraph 5, which says an owner is not required to comply with the requirements if the owner has a reasonable excuse for not complying. So in Scotland, the EPC won't hold up the transaction. Um, the department have indicated that uh, COVID-19 is going to be a, a reasonable excuse for not uh, complying with the requirement to have an EPC for the transaction. So that, that is different in Scotland for those of you in Scotland or who produce EPCs for Scotland. This advice, of course, is pertaining to uh, EPCs for existing buildings. Quite a few of you who've asked questions in advance of the webinar are asking about the new build situation. Uh, the guidance um, for the whole of the UK is that for new buildings, you can take the information confirmed as built from the developer or their representatives. We always recommend people go to site because you are responsible for what you lodge, but the regulations do allow new build EPCs to be produced without a visit to site. So the current situation provided you can get that information uh, in the usual way, it won't hold up an EPC for a new build situation. Um, we've given some thought to, to what you might be doing. Um, if the current situation is creating some free time. I've, I've already said that I don't think that's happened with me. I think I'm busier than usual. And I recognize that a fair few of you may well be busier than usual. But if the lockdown situation has created some free time, uh, you'd expect us to say this sort of thing, wouldn't you? Keep on top of all the administration of your records, including CPD records. It's a bit early in the year, so you may not have done much CPD to record but make sure it's up to date and of course you may start looking around for things to do for CPD activity to get it done now if you are a bit quiet now so that you don't have to worry about it later. A little bit more on that shortly. Uh, if you're an applicant uh, get any applications completed now would be a good time to do that uh, and if you're looking at um, adding to your strands of registration. So there's more that you can do when uh, business does recover. Uh, that would be a, a good thing to do as well. I know of at least one person thinking of doing that and I will uh, get back to them by email to tell them what they need to do for that. Um, that wasn't my suggestion. You can guess who that was. Uh, credit to Pavlos there, respond to any outstanding QA requests. So uh, I just said um, now might be a good time to get this year's CPD uh, under your belt. So um, we're hoping that this will be the first webinar of a series um, that we can host, facilitate, um, so that there are regular webinars that you can use to uh, brush up on topics of interest and uh, add to your CPD records. So there's two, way that, two ways this can happen. One is if there are topics that you would like to feature in a webinar uh, where we can either provide the information for that webinar, something on how to apply or the QA process, for example. Um, if you suggest topics by emailing epc at sibsycertification.org, uh, 
we can look at developing webinars based on your requests. Uh, but we do recognise there's a lot of expertise uh, out there amongst you. Uh, I've already had some volunteers for the COP26 that was originally going to be in November. Uh, people have volunteered to showcase some of their projects at that. That's now been postponed. Um, so perhaps they'd like to convert what they were going to present there into a webinar. Uh, it could be anyone, anything that you think anyone else would be interested in, an interesting project, uh, how you've uh, approached ESOS reporting, um, shortcuts and tricks you've um, worked out in using the software, uh, anything that you think other people would find interesting and useful. So again, if you'd like to volunteer, uh, send in your uh, suggestions by email to the usual address. Uh, so that, that brings us to uh, any questions. Um, we have had a few questions um, sent in in advance. Uh, the most frequently asked one I've already dealt with, that was um, EPCs for new buildings. So just to be clear, um, the uh, scheme operating requirements uh, do allow on construction EPCs uh, to be done on verification of as-built information from the developer. So site visits are not essential. As I say, we do recommend them, but they're not essential. And in the current circumstances, we um, understand people not being able to go to site. Uh, another question that's been asked is, is about um, if someone's software certificate is due to expire and they can't attend an exam to renew it. Um, we do have a procedure for circumstances when people can't take an exam. It's not available for all software, for example. Uh, and we assess some certificates that are produced using the software. Um, and that, that's a procedure requiring five example certificates. Uh, of course, if you are undergoing QA processes, we do take successful completion of audits in lieu of um, software exams after your initial certification. So providing you've successfully completed an audit in the last three years, you wouldn't need to resit the exam anyway. So I think that's covered all the permutations there. Uh, somebody asked about undertaking the uh, Scotland Energy Assessor exam. Uh, that's the LCC Scotland exam. Uh, that is available online and you need to contact the CBC training department who uh, administer that. Right, I'm now going to turn to questions that uh, have come in during. So uh, yeah, a couple of people asking about software exams, but I've already covered that. Uh, somebody is asking what about decks, and I think we also had a question about air conditioning inspection reports. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, is regarding the guidance I was just talking about for producing EPCs uh, in the current situation. So uh, the advice on the government website is talking about the production of EPCs that would otherwise hold up a property transaction. So that logic doesn't apply to decks because decks are not required for property transactions. So I don't think there's anything in the guidance to suggest you should be going to site for the production of decks. If it's a deck renewal, you don't need to go to site if you're doing an advisory report or a deck that's new for you, <clears throat> you would need to go to site, but you are not able to do that at the moment. Uh, air conditioning inspections were the same as decks, really. Um, normally, an air conditioning inspection wouldn't be holding up a property transaction. So there isn't a case for carrying out air conditioning inspections at the moment, although uh, a very efficient solicitor should be asking the question 
if there isn't one for a building that should have one. But um, I'm not aware that that happens very often. But it, yes, if a solicitor is saying an air conditioning inspection report was required to allow a transaction to complete, um, then the guidance would relate to that. Um, uh, okay, and that's sort of just as an immediate response to that. TM44 could hold up ISO 14001 and 50001 certification. Uh, and that is true. Um, we are a certification body for both of those standards. Uh, we haven't actually encountered that as an issue yet, so I'm having to think on my feet a bit. Um, that is a requirement, but I think if someone didn't have a, a current certificate uh, during an audit, uh, we would raise that as a finding and we would put what we thought was a reasonable time scale. In other words, for someone to find an assessor, get it in the diary, get the survey done and get the report lodged. So we might give someone a three year, a three year, three month deadline to um, provide the evidence they've had one done. Uh, I think in the current circumstance, we would be uh, reasonable in setting that uh, time to respond to the finding at some point in the future, far enough in the future for that not to be a problem. Um, I've heard of a few things being deferred. I've had a question about SECR being deferred. I haven't heard that that is the case. Um, okay, I might bring Pavlos in on this one as well. Um, can the EPC produced on the basis of a tenant fit out before it occurs for me's compliance purposes and to allow the lease to be stated? The EPC would be relaunched once the fit out is complete. Um, hello there, this is Pavlos. Um, Thanks, Pavlos. Hi, so, um, well, under the um, normal um, circumstances, not the current circumstances. Uh, we have had this um, conversation with uh, MHCLZ several times in the past. Uh, they have confirmed in any, in, in all ways really, that um, a tenancy agreement cannot be evidence to be used for the production of EPCs. There's a specific methodology on how you treat uh, buildings that will be fitted out in the future, whether they're new built or existing buildings, um, and CLC wants to stick with that. Um, tenancy agreements are not considered um, evidence for, for EPC production, and that's very clear from the government. Yeah, but that methodology, Pavlos, does that require a site visit or is that information provided? For the new build, obviously, there is always the that option you described earlier for to have a statement from the developer or um, another professional uh, individual who has the yeah. uh, professional judgment to confirm that the building was constructed uh, or and or fitted out according to the design. That's enough evidence to, to issue an EPC for, for a new build. Uh, unfortunately, for existing buildings, um, Site visit is always mandatory, and we haven't seen any appetite from the government to to relax that requirement in the current climate. Uh, so we have to stick with that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right, Pavlos. Thanks. Um, Thank you. If a survey has been furloughed, but the company has the survey details, can another surveyor still work and complete the work has come in as a question. I think the answer to that is no. Uh, that is sort of talking about the initial surveyor having been the data gatherer, but still the person using a data gatherer needs to be to cite themselves as well. So I think the answer is no to that. Um, someone has just clarified on that SECR 
question that filing of annual accounts has been deferred for three months and as SECR is tied up in that that probably means that is as well okay uh, I've had a question about uh, webinars that seem to be membership are running. I should point out uh, for people looking for CPD activity, in addition to uh, our webinars, simply are running uh, more webinars than they normally would during this period. So it's probably worth looking at their website as well. And a lot of you are simply members and are probably getting notifications about those anyway. Uh, someone's asked if. Uh, when you're getting construction information from a main contractual developer, do we have a standard pro forma? No, uh, we don't. Uh, I know a lot of companies have their own standard forms for that sort of thing, so we haven't tried to do that. Okay, what is the situation with EPC assessors on furlough regarding EPC audit requests, invoicing and other stuff like software examination? Well, I think I mentioned the software examination already. Um, I think the thing that needs answering there is the audit request. Uh, is that something I can ask Pavlos to come in on again? Yes, of course, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to include as many people as I can, just so it's not not me talking all the time. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Um, uh, we haven't received any instructions from MHCLZ or the Scottish Government to to alter um, or change the way we we audit. Um, so as far as we're concerned, and in line with uh, letter of approvals we have from the from the government, uh, we have to continue to to conduct our audits the way we've been doing. Um, obviously, for pretty much all types of audits, they're, they're done remotely. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, passing the, the evidence to us and allow us to, to do the checks. Um, I appreciate that there may be circumstances where an assessor cannot get hold of all the information because they're, you know, um, somewhere in their offices where they can't go and pick them up. Uh, we're trying to be reasonable uh, in our approach, and I think Andrew had a uh, had a, um, a meeting with the other schemes uh, where the agreement was that uh, we will have to um, have some um, some understanding of the situation. Um, Andrew, gonna uh, help me with that. Uh, I think the, the discussion was that we're going to be reasonable in terms of uh, access to data. Uh, for this uh, period where um, social distancing is, is required and people can't really uh, access everything yes. they have in the office. Yeah, thanks, Pavlos. Yeah, we, we have agreed between the schemes, although CLG haven't specifically okayed this, um, we're, we're confident that as long as we're all doing the same thing, uh, there won't be a problem. Uh, we've all got um, measures in, in our standard procedures to deal with um, uh, people being on holiday, people being off sick, uh, yes, where, we can exactly. extend, yeah. where we can extend times, and, and this is, uh, we think, a perfectly acceptable situation. So if someone has been furloughed to answer the original question, if they let us know, um, if they call for audit that they're furloughed, we will uh, simply put an extension you know, the, the, the case is on hold and, until they're available to work again. Yeah, I just need to, to clarify that um, our understanding is that in most situations, most assessors will have access to this. Um, but yes, even the SORs refer to legitimate reasons for time extensions in, in audit tasks. Um, things like uh, being off sick or being on annual leave. Uh, I think the situation here is probably a legitimate reason for, for the time extension. Uh, but we don't anticipate this happening very often. We hope people uh, to have the means to access their you know, uh, servers at work and, and just simply um, 
create a zip file with all the evidence and pass them to, to us. Uh, I think the only exemption to what we're talking about is level five APC audits, which do require a visit to the assessor's office. Um, we are required to audit 10% of our active assessors every year. We tend to break the year into two parts usually uh, and split the audits uh, in, a, in a calendar year. Um, but considering what's happening right now, uh, Andrew and I made the decision that we're not going to do that split this year. So we're going to call all the audits for 2020 at the end of towards the end of this year hopefully uh, things will be back to normal and we will be able to do um, visits to to our assessors offices um, so yes um, doesn't really change the requirement or or um, the, the things that we need to do is just that the matter that we're not going to be able to split the load into two parts within the calendar year we're going to do everything in the second part of the year yeah, thanks, Pavlos. Yeah, with the extension, uh, with the exception of level five, as Pavlos has just said, we, we're aiming to do as much as we can uh, at an at the normal time that we would be doing it, just to avoid the problems that postponing everything to later will create in terms of a of, of a backlog. Um, so, although it might, might be tempting to think, oh, this is nice, we'll we'll put our orders off to yeah. later, it, it is just storing up work for later on. So, um, I mean, even even. Even thinking as an assessor, which I used to be, um, you do want to get these things over with in anticipation of uh, things being back to normal, and um, you know, hopefully there will there will be uh, an increase on, on demand because a lot of work will be will be held back. So you don't want to have to respond to an audit at that point. You want to um, finish with that as soon as possible, so that you have as much free time as possible to do billable work. Okay, let's go on to another question. We, we had one in, in advance that I, I think has been asked again during the webinar. Um, this is one Ratija might like to answer. Um, it's about LCC membership fees, um, whether there'll be a way to defer them if these need to be reviewed in the next few months. So if I hand over to Ratija. I think you can probably cover that one. The silence means there's an example of... I just have oh. to unmute myself. Oh, um, right, good. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> right. The um, renewals are due in September, so hopefully we'll be in full swing by then anyway, so there shouldn't be any need to defer anything right now because there are no fees um, due apart from new registrations. I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, I think so. It certainly does uh, for now. It's that's sort of six months away. So um, yes, hopefully uh, we won't still be in this situation by then. Uh, okay, I need to um, run through some other questions uh yeah i can just confirm for one person who's asked a question uh where we are providing management system certification as opposed to personnel so this is the 9001 and the iso 50001 for example um, we are going to be able to continue conducting audits using remote uh, auditing techniques again on the principle of making sure we don't end up with a backlog of these things so normal surveillance audits for ISO 9001 and 50001 uh, will go ahead by remote auditing. We're receiving our annual surveillance audit from UCAS next week using the same technique. So uh, that gives us a good chance to try it out. Um, there's a question that I think is about the impending part L uh, consultation. It's a bit difficult to answer that at the moment. Uh, 
Uh, someone's asked, does that apply to LCC exams? I think that may be when I was talking about software exams, uh, there isn't a time limit. You don't have to retake LCC exams. You maintain that competence through your CPD. I think I've covered decks that need a survey. We can't do those at the moment. Uh, someone's having problems downloading XML files from the landmark register. I think we probably need to take that offline. Uh, any questions we don't get through, uh, get to during the webinar either because we think they're too uh, specific to a particular case or something, we will follow up. Um, we do capture all these questions and we'll follow up after the webinar. So if you don't get a question answered, it, it will be, but feel free to ask it again th through the emails. Right. Just go to the um, most recent questions. Yeah, just confirm again if you have successful audit history, you don't need to worry about software re examination if it's within the last three years. Uh, yet yeah, someone who's going to collect information from site, they wouldn't normally do it. Uh, feel free to send us the form if you'd like us to have a percent check of it for you. Uh, someone's asking if there's been any further guidance from CLG on EPCs being available for transactions. Um, that's a relative question because I don't know which uh, guidance you've seen most recently. Uh, there to be further guidance. Um, in your question, you're saying if you feel it's unsafe to attend a site, uh, but there still needs to be a transaction. The most recent CLG advice is that if it's needed for a transaction, you are allowed to go to site, subject to it being safe to do so. So an empty building is an example they're giving, but then there is the separation and the protective clothing options as well. Um, bottom line is, if you feel it is unsafe to attend the site, you are not required to. That's the way the advice is given. It's saying you're allowed to if you think you can do it safely, but you're not required to. So if someone is trying to complete a transaction, needs an EPC, and uh, EPC assessors are saying it's not safe to do it, that transaction, if it's in England, will be on hold because they don't have that paragraph that I've um, just relayed to you this afternoon that they have in Scotland. So, uh, just to be clear, you're allowed to say no. Don't feel uh, you have to go to site because someone's telling you they need it for transaction. The guidance is you're allowed to, but not that you must. Yeah, the Part L uh, compliance questions. Uh, Again, for the consultation, I think the way the questions are being asked will, I think I need to confer with the technical department in SIMSI and see if they've got any more recent information on that, uh, whether we can make that the topic of a future webinar when we do get that information. Um, I've invited you to volunteer to run the webinar. Someone was asking how that would happen. It would happen exactly as this one is happening. So we would set up um, the webinar uh, time slot on our go-to meeting facility. Uh, the person delivering the 
webinar will be set up as the organizer. Uh, I've shown you some slides today. The slides you've seen are on the screen on my desktop um, from the study in my house. Uh, all of the team who've uh, chipped in and answering questions, thank you for that, um, are in their home offices. So this is being done entirely virtually. So if you want to deliver a webinar using a PowerPoint presentation or anything else uh, that you can um, run on your desktop, uh, a GoTo webinar facility allows you to broadcast your computer screen to the world. Uh, we've got 75 attendees at the moment. Uh, I think from the list I saw, most of you are in the UK, but people could be listening from anywhere in the world. So uh, that's how that works. If you'd like to run a webinar, we, we have the technology and um, we can set you up. And we had half an hour before we started today and making sure it was all working and everyone was happy with it. We do the same with anyone volunteering. Uh, someone's asking what if it isn't safe i think i did just answer that if it is not safe and that is for you to decide you don't go to site there is no mandate in the government guidance for you to go to site they are saying that transactions can't go ahead but that is someone else's problem not the energy assessor you do not need to go to site if it's not safe to do so Um, I'm going to go back to Pavlos for this one because uh, I think he may have answered this question more recently than me. I'm not uh, so sure off the top of my head. This is the uh, benefit of working in a team. Uh, Pavlos, for a new build EPC, what evidence is acceptable for power factor if an on site reading can't be taken? We could accept a photograph from someone else in the current circumstances. Yes, there is. Uh, yes, there is um, there's a specific EBC convention for uh, evidence on um, power factor, and I'm trying to open it up as we speak. Um, uh, which um, has a sort of a hierarchy of how, what sort of evidence you have and what sort of value you are allowed allowed to use so um, everything that has to do with evidence on power factor it, it's is really covered by um, by the conventions currently okay thanks Pavlos and that's a short answer um, yeah, if, if you if you need more information or um, you, you just, just send us an email uh, we can we can go through the convention together uh, and uh, advise accordingly yeah, thank you, Pavlos. So there is a convention covering that, um, which is a useful prompt for me to add that to the list of things you could be doing if you do have a bit of spare time. Um, just have a look at the conventions relevant to your strand if you're uh, an LCA, because uh, they are updated from time to time. And you may have missed the last update, so now would be a good time just to make sure you are working to the latest conventions. Um, I've had a question, can we lodge the EPC level five without going on site? Um, the answer is only if it's for a new building. So being level five doesn't make it different to level four in terms of needing to go to site, it's whether it's a new building or not. So that could be level four or level five uh, new building. You don't need to go to site. For existing buildings, level three, four or five, you do need to go to site and the current guidance is only do that if it's safe for you to do so. Right, well, we, uh, we're approaching the 14 minute mark and most of that has been questions. So that's been quite good. Uh, there are no new questions come in. So uh, we will call it a day there. Uh, thank you all for participating. Thank you for those that have sent questions in. Uh, and I will finish just by uh, stressing again, we would like to hear from people who would like to deliver a webinar, uh, but equally we'd like to hear from you all on topics you'd like to see in a webinar. 
and uh, watch our news page. We'll let you know through newsletters when we've got upcoming webinars, but we're trying not to overload the uh, sending of emails because that does reduce the likelihood you'll read them. Uh, instead of that, please get in the habit of going to our news page and any updates, whether it's on webinars or on updated government advice, uh, it'll all be on our news page uh, and also on the PEPA page for LCAs. Okay, thank you all and uh, hopefully uh, be virtually with you in, uh, in some of our subsequent webinars. Keep safe and keep well, and uh, we'll meet again soon.